she wants to do is to I should probably do choruses. I'm Ash, and this is Mike. And today we're actually going to be doing a movie review of Bombshell. I'm a huge movie geek, so is Mike. I studied film because I'm useless. And uh, we both watched this, you know, in the last few days. I was a big fan of Megyn Kelly, and Mike, I assume, was too. Yes. And so uh, we're also fans of at least, you know, a handful of the people that are in the movie. So it was something that, regardless of politics or how it shook out, we were going to end up watching eventually. So I will start with uh, Mike's thoughts on the movie. For me, it was uh, sort of two stories happening at the same time. Megan Kelly's personal view and everything else outside of her own experiences, including the Gretchen Carlson lawsuit and everything else that was going on at Fox at the time. I thought that they gave a more fair shake than I was expecting, given that it was a Hollywood movie about Fox News. True. Um, I mean, there were a few shots generally at conservatives or and plenty of shots at Fox News, which is to be expected in the way that they were portraying it at that time. I don't know how much of it was true. I don't know how bad things were. Um, I definitely watched... Fox all the time, but more Fox business, and I still do. Always liked and respected Megyn Kelly. I remember being really angry the week that she and Trump went back and forth at really the way she was being treated and the fact that conservatives, for the most part, didn't seem to be sticking up for her because I didn't like Trump then. I was a lose with Cruz person at that time. I thought it was rude, and I thought she was a really good journalist, even if that's not, you know, where her background was as far as she was in law, you know. Uh, but it was a, like she was asking him fair questions. She wasn't throwing him softballs. So I remember respecting it. Um, the film itself, um, it was still interesting to watch and entertaining. I'm a huge fan of Nicole Kidman. I like Charlize Theron. She seems like a dick in real life. Uh, I love Margot Robbie. And it was, um, it's just kind of like fun to watch in a way. I never liked Gretchen. I don't know how you feel about Gretchen. I never had strong feelings about Gretchen Carlson one way or the other. It seems like they dug pretty deep into what was going on with her and how she had a plan to sue him personally because she knew that he had a home in New Jersey, that that was important. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> um, it seemed like they set up a whole thing where Fox circles wagons, and everybody does it. So if, if one of their own gets sued, Fox could protect them. But she figured out a way to sue him personally so that she was able to separate him from Fox. And it was interesting to see how the Murdochs reacted during the whole thing. I thought they were portrayed as not nearly as bad as Roger Ailes. I think, honestly, when you own something and you want to protect it, and you are a step removed from everything that's going on in the way that it's managed, the way that they're portrayed probably makes sense with the way that you would behave. Um, it would be different, I think, if uh, there really are all beautiful women all around at Foxy News and you were down there in the midst of it. Not to say that he would have done anything like that, but you're just removed from that. So when you hear about this kind of stuff, and he probably knew about some of it, you know, over the years, just rumors kind of a thing. But if people start coming out and they're making something you own look terrible, like 
you would have to get the guy out of there. And uh, it may or may not be, you know, a sign of your virtue to do it. But um, you could also see when he was, like, asking for them to say he was leaving with him together, and the answer was no, that that was just sort of like, mm, that would make me look bad for one thing, and you're gross, I don't want to be associated with you. So, um, it's crazy, I mean, but I think you, there are certain fields where they're considered old boys clubs, and to me, journalism is probably the one where it is m most considered an old boys club film is up there but i do think women can find a way to be awesome in film you know and be respected Catherine bigelow uh jumps out and really a lot of female directors are now directing the big blockbuster films and i think they really did it in the 90s too but journalism it's ivy league and old boys club like all the way yeah, um, their treatment of Ailes in the end seemed pragmatic. Like, as long as nobody can prove anything, we're making all this money, we'll, we'll let him do his thing, and now it, he's becoming more of a problem than he's helping us, so we're going to get rid of him. I can't say that that's really some kind of indictment of Murdoch's. That's probably how most of these news companies would have acted. The way that... They got rid of Matt Lauer. But the thing is, if you juxtapose the way the Ailes thing happened and the way the Matt Lauer thing happened, NBC looks way worse than Fox News. Um, I actually remember when it happened, you did have a few people, you know, in the movie it's portrayed as like the women who are playing ball versus the ones who are being defiant. But you did have a few people, Kimberly Guilfoyle, portrayed terrible like as a terrible person in the movie basically um but what i remember is it seemed more like she was like i can't say what happened to anybody else nothing happened to me you know which as long as that's true you know that might be all that you can do in that position unless you know things that have happened to other people however those kinds of things are happening and everybody knows about it like you know with harvey weinstein then you're really just complicit in what is going on. But once the stuff starts coming out, I think, you know, they had like Team Roger. I don't know if any of that happened, you know. When there's a snowball effect like that, how you take sides, you know, I, I can't see standing with people personally, but the character that they have, Kate McKinnon character, I think... She, it, she works well as a just sort of a metaphor for the ambivalence of people who would be in that position like you know something's wrong but you also want to protect your job and really the margot robbie character too that scene where she was crying was a really good scene from her i think it just shows uh really the desperation the way that they juxtapose that with a later scene you know it's like where megan kelly uh, and, and you said you heard about Shannon Bream as well. Like, even if it's scary, and even if you're not really sure how it's going to affect you, you just put your foot down and say no, versus somebody who thinks they have to and just does it because they don't know what else to do. Shannon Bream talked to Ben Shapiro specifically about what happened to her, and it wasn't as bad as Megan Kelly. In the movie, he tried to kiss her. Right. Shannon Bream said there were long meetings where she would bring all these ideas and he would ignore them and talk at length about what she was wearing. And eventually she just refused to meet with him anymore, told some of the producers, and she said they put up a wall and he never spoke to her or saw her again. She was initially demoted but ended up with her own show. Yeah, and something that you and I had talked about, too, is maybe with him it was some sort of a BS litmus test where he could say, well, if they don't do it, then they're the kinds of women with integrity that we need, and if they do, then I keep them around somewhere, but they don't get a show and I just got a blowjob, you know? I do wonder about how people like that justify things to themselves, so it's... a possibility i suppose 
I think people look at a lot of the people on Fox, like I'm just speaking from, I guess, you know, seeing comments from people on the left, that Fox News, they're just hot people that don't have a lot upstairs. And I think if you think that you've never watched Fox News and you don't know anything about the credentials of some of these people. Um, I remember Jenna Lee, who's not on Fox anymore. She has a really like impressive background. And then there's a lot of attorneys on Fox. They're not just dumb women. And I think it's just a matter of not agreeing with them. So people look for things. If you... We were talking about it today. Uh, people uh, who just, you know, attack ad hominem. It's just not something that I would ever do. Uh, but I'm glad if things have reformed there. Because I think they do have a lot of talent um, at Fox News and Fox Business. So if things are better now, that's awesome. I felt like the Kate McKinnon thing was a vehicle. I kind of doubt a lot of... What happened with her happened that she even existed. I think actually that the two of them were just characters to tell the story. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be based on anyone. Another thing, though, that jumped out to me was the weird, vague threats that uh, Megyn Kelly got in person from people who would say, Trump 2016, like that was a threat in itself. I do believe the one on the tennis court happened where her husband threatened him. Yeah, and it's funny, though, because people uh, looked at a recent interview where she did, like, her first interview on Fox News with Tucker Carlson since all of that happened and she left. And I went on there and I started watching some of it, and it was, like, 30 minutes long. I didn't watch the whole thing. But I just looked at the comments, and they were all negative, still attacking her after all this time. So when she got fired from NBC, and she says we're going after Matt Lauer, I was like, just come back to Fox, because I just loved her show. I love The Kelly File. It was like my favorite show, period, until Kennedy. I looked at those comments, and it's like, I don't really blame her for not coming back. And the fact that she's doing interviews on her own and getting just YouTube subscribers and ads and she can ask her own questions and be her own person is something that we actually really need in journalism right now. Mark Dice, I remember, attacked her like, Megyn Kelly is doing YouTube videos now. And then I pretty much said what I just said to you and he didn't say anything, you know, because it's true. They There's so much bias on each side. You can imagine... Tucker Carlson, I don't agree with half of what he says on his show anymore. He's just a, like a Luddite, and I don't like people attacking technology or saying that we should not uh, innovate so people can keep their jobs. I don't like any of that stuff. And he was really conspiratorial the other night talking about China and like terrorism and all that. But what she's doing now, you know, she wouldn't have to worry about somebody upstairs coming down and telling him, hey, Tucker, you're being weird. Shut up. And then he looks at him, you know, with that look. Can't cook the tuck. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, like, what's wrong with that? Uh, like, on the whole, I think it's a pretty good movie. Interesting to watch. It's kind of funny sometimes. My mom, though, my mom is always uh, pretty honest, and she said Charlize made up to look like Megyn Kelly is not as pretty as Megyn Kelly. Mike and I agree that the Harris Faulkner, like, cannot touch real Harris. But everybody else, kind of generous. Right. I used to think Kimberly Guilfoyle was really pretty. I think recently she's like, I don't know, had too much work done or something, or maybe it's just that I don't like Don Jr. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. They were pretty generous to everybody. Margot Robbie, whoever she's supposed to be, or she, uh, you know, arrived out of thin air, she's always like... Alice Eve... As Ainsley, that's a little generous. Not that Ainsley's a bad-looking person, but... Ainsley's not a bad-looking person, but I think she should be named Ainsley Airhead. I am not impressed. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some of the other walkthroughs. They, um, maybe it's me, maybe because I'm short, but I'm pretty sure every actor who was playing a guy other than O'Reilly and Ailes 
was shorter than the actual guy. And uh, the guy who's supposed to be Sean Hannity looked more like Bo Bridges, and I said that, and my dad started laughing his ass off. And uh, the one who was playing Cavuto didn't look anything like him. No, it was a tiny Jewish man. Yeah, Cavuto, I really like Cavuto, so I hope that he did. He wasn't as, like, nasty or what, however they portrayed him in real life, because, yeah, I like the man, so... I don't know. But it's a good movie, even if you're a conservative. I, I don't think it's so overtly anti-right that you can't enjoy the film. Yeah, I I didn't think it was a really political movie, other than the blurb from Kate McKinnon's character about how a Fox story works. And that really wasn't nearly as bad as a lot of movies that go political. But I've seen everything out there to get clicks. This movie... It hates conservatives, and then I watch the movie, and I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, we're going to have to probably do a show on that one day, because, yeah, that happens all the time. So, in any case, we hope you watch the movie and leave your thoughts on it in the comments section. Have a good one.